Hello everyone and welcome to the lecture series on CFD pre-processing. In this series, we'll look at ANSYS ICM CFD, a pre-processing software supplied by ANSYS Inc. ICM CFD has a vast capabilities including image generation for CFD as well as a structural solvers. It also has large number of post-processing functions. In this lecture series, we'll focus only on its CFD meshing capabilities. To activate only CFD version and its necessary UI components, you need to do appropriate product settings. To do so, go to settings menu and product sub menu. Activate CFD version along with blocking, apply and restart the application. This is the outline of our discussion today. First, we'll look at overall task involved in pre-processing. Then, we'll look at various cell shapes supported by standard CFD solvers like ANSYS Fluent or ANSYS CFX. We'll also look at various grid generation methods. Later in the lecture, we'll discuss more about various operations done in ICM CFD. Then, we'll look at different components of UI and their functions. We'll also look at various files associated with ICM CFD and their data content. Work and data flow in ICM CFD depends on meshing strategy selected. At the end of the lecture, we'll discuss general as well as a specific workflow in a typical meshing requirement. After understanding the concepts in this lecture, you should be comfortable with UI of ICM CFD and overall workflow. You should be able to navigate through the software and locate the necessary functions. Before going into the details of ICM CFD UI, let's discuss more about what is pre-processing. From our CFD fundamental lectures, you might have understood that computational fluid dynamics is a method of solving governing equations using numerical methods like finite difference, finite element or finite volume. In all these methods, the governing equations either in a differential form or an integral form are discretized and rewritten at either a point or for an element or for a control volume. Control volume is also called as cell in CFD community. As the equations are written and solved in discretized form, the domain or the geometry in which the equations are going to be solved also needs to be discretized. So to facilitate the solution of governing equations using numerical methods, we need to give following domain inputs to the solver. The first input is shape and size of the domain. This defines the region in which the equations will be solved. We then need to discretize the domain as it will be given to the solver solving governing equations in discretized form. To identify the domain boundaries during sol solver setup, we need to give appropriate boundary taggings. This is also called as setting up boundary conditions. The mesh with all this information is then needs to be written in the file or format understood by a selected solver. If physics of the problem is same, then in CFD analysis, same governing equations are solved. Let's take a simple example. Imagine that you want to find the pressure drop across inlet and outlet of a duct and a control valve. In both the cases, we need to solve for an incompressible flow of water. In this case, solution of continuity equation, three momentum equations and turbulence equations is required. But if you look at the end results, you can easily notice that the flow feature is different in duct as that of a control valve. This difference is the result of different boundary conditions used for both the cases. So as to result into a unique solution of governing equations, we need to give unique boundary conditions. The uniqueness of boundary condition is defined by shape, size as well as value of known flow property on the boundary. A typical CFD pre-processing activity involves creating the shape and size of the domain. This is generally supplied through a CAD data. This CAD model is generally created using a CAD software or a geometry modeling features available in ICM CFD. Due to the limited geometry modeling features available in ICM CFD, it is mainly used to create a simple geometries. In case of complex geometries, a standard CAD software is used, which can generate complicated CAD model within a short time. But this comes with its own limitation and requires considerable CAD repair. The next activity is dividing the domain in small parts or subdomains. 
This process is also referred as mesh generation, grid generation or domain discretization. There are various grid generation methods. Broadly, they are divided into three main categories namely structured multi-block meshing, Cartesian meshing or unstructured meshing method. Once the correct grid is generated, the next activity is putting boundary tags as well as domain tags. The boundary tags involves labeling the surfaces of the domain with labels like inlet, outlet or a wall. The domain tagging involves labeling the volumes with solid or fluid. All this information is then exported in a correct file format understood by a CFD solver. So to summarize the overall pre-processing activity involves geometry modeling, grid generation, boundary taggings and mesh export. Now let's look at the fundamental definition of grid or mesh.